Hello everyone, Commander Josh Hawkins here once again, and I'm sending another broadcast back to you to share some more of the interesting things I've seen on my journey so far. This voyage will take us to the far reaches of the Milky Way, where we'll definitely see some amazing vistas. Together, we'll explore everything from ice rings that formed around enormous gas giants and tiny moons only a few hundred kilometers across. We'll travel to unique and bizarre planets, land on their surface, and bounce around in low gravity while we explore canyons filled with massive glaciers. I hope to capture and share as much of it as possible. Welcome to part two of Exploring the Milky Way Galaxy. Douglas Adams was right. Space is big. Really big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. What you're seeing now is almost 8,000 light years worth of travel condensed into about one minute. It's taken me just over two weeks to reach my first target in the Blay High Pi sector, and up until just a few days ago, it felt like I would never get there. My target nebula is an emission nebula, about 180 light years tall and 140 light years wide. It sits just below the Carina Sagittarius spiral arm of our Milky Way galaxy, roughly 12,000 light years from the core. What started as just a dark blob way off in the distance now fills my entire field of view. An emission nebula is a luminous cloud of gas due to the ionization of its atoms from ultraviolet radiation. In simpler terms, this works almost exactly the same way as a neon sign you would see at a store. The gas in those store signs is charged by electrodes on either side of the tube that passes an electrical charge through the gas. As the electrons collide with the atoms of gas in the tube, they form ions, which are just atoms that have one less or one extra electron. The atoms don't hold the charge for very long, and as they lose that extra energy, they emit photons, or light, whose color corresponds to the type of gas that was in the tube, causing it to glow. Similarly, the gas in an emission nebula is charged by the ultraviolet light emitted from young stars. Most stars are actually relatively cool. Well, perhaps cool isn't exactly the right term for it. Our sun, an M-class star, has a surface temperature of about 3500 degrees Kelvin, which is about the same temperature as a welding torch, so you probably wouldn't want to get too close to it. But stars like our sun give off most of their electromagnetic radiation in the visible or near-infrared part of the spectrum. Young stars, on the other hand, are typically much larger and burn much hotter. They can have surface temperatures reaching as high as 2.5 million degrees Kelvin or more. Since they're so much hotter, they produce a lot more radiation, especially in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. The density of molecular gas in and around these nebula creates a nursery where hundreds of young stars are born and grow, so there's a lot of ultraviolet radiation to excite the gas around them. The human eye sees a wide range of what we call visual color, but unlike some other species that live on our planet, our human eyes are unable to see ultraviolet light. Birds and bees, on the other hand, can see ultraviolet light an evolutionary development that helps them to find the most nectar-rich parts of a flower, amongst other things. Reindeer are also capable of seeing ultraviolet light, but not as well as birds or bees. While butterflies are actually thought to have the widest visual range of the light spectrum of any animal. Considering how beautiful and brilliant the colors of the nebula are to us, I can only imagine what they would look like if we can see them through a butterfly's eyes. Before I end this transmission, I'd like to share with you a quote by Mary Somerville, the first female member of the Royal Astronomical Society. So numerous are the objects which meet our view in the heavens, that we cannot imagine a point of space where some light would not strike the eye. Innumerable stars, thousands of double and multiple systems, clusters in one blaze with their tens of thousands of stars, and the nebulae amazing us by the strangeness of their forms and the incomprehensibility of their nature, till at last, from the limit of our senses, even these thin and airy phantoms vanish in the distance. I hope you enjoyed this broadcast. Please click the like button below if you did, and don't forget to subscribe. This is Commander Josh Hawkins, signing off.